In today's episode, QPAC president Heidi Yetman welcomes Saigon, Charlie Patton, OG John Kanadwa. They will be discussing the upcoming Earth Day Stories to Celebrate Mother Earth, which is a co-taught lesson brought to us by the Cobblestone Collective and the QPAT Anti-Racism Discussion Group. Teachers are invited to sign up with their students to join Earth Day Stories to Celebrate Mother Earth. On this day, students will listen to his teachings in this 60-minute lesson and will have the opportunity to reflect on our connections to Mother Earth and explore the imagery that his stories will bring. Enjoy. We have with us uh, Charlie Patton, who is uh, a beer, uh, the, a beer clan leader. Uh, and I'm going to try to pronounce your, your name. Um, and you're going to have to correct me if I make a mistake. <laughs> and I, I think I've already forgotten how to pronounce it. So can you can you introduce yourself in your language? Yeah, Oji Chaganda, you are so not. My name is Oji Chaganda, and it Thank means uh, my yeah, friend, uh, one of my old elder friend. He says there are many translations, but he says in his eyes he sees it as. It, it translates into speckled flower. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it's like a white, a white flower, but it has, you know, the dust on it. Right. He says oh. that's what it really means. Oh, so you're a speckled flower. I like it. It's really nice. It's yeah. a beautiful image. Um, so our, um, um, I know that you have a bachelor's in education and you're currently um, a cultural advisor with the First Nations Technical Institute of Ontario. So we're really pleased to have you with us. And uh, you are our honored guest for our co-lesson, which will take place on April the 22nd, uh, appropriately on Earth Day. So that's wonderful. And you'll be telling us some stories about Earth, stories to celebrate Mother Earth. And so I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what storytelling is, how important storytelling is in your culture. Well, really, our, we're a people who, we didn't have a written language a long time ago. Uh, everything was in our teachings, everything we kept in our minds, in our minds and in our hearts and in our spirits. And, and when we, and we told everything in stories, everything was described in terms of the earth and, and from our creation right to present. And so when we talk about it in stories and we keep it alive, and that's the key word, it's always alive. What they, uh, the old elders used to say is, if you write it down in a book, it's, it's got lines written on there, but it has no spirit. It has no voice. And if in a lot of times you'll get a book and you put it on a shelf and it gathers dust and nobody ever reads it. But in human, in human beings, in our people, uh, we, we're supposed to talk about it all the time because it is life. Every day you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes and you, you breathe another breath, your first one of the day. And that means that you're alive. And, and that's what our word for, for a day is, Nisara, means another breath. And breath is life. Without air and without the breath that we take, there is no life. And so these are like so, so some of the most important things. And in, in all our stories, we have stories that talk about creation in our world. And still to this day, the, effect, the things that happen from creation to now, we can see it in, our, in how we live and how we, be, we are. You know, uh, for, for example, when human beings were created, the creator made human beings. They say he took uh, his uh, mind and he gave us his mind. So we think and we have a mind. He gave us his fire and he put his fire in our blood. So we all have fire in our blood. And when that fire goes, then we call, when there's no more fire, no more warmth in our blood, we, we call it death. And we breathe into our mouths, and now we 
we, we have air that we breathe, the creator's breath. And, and every day and every second that we breathe, we're alive. When we no longer can sustain a breath, then what is what does that mean for us? And then, you know, in our stories, they talk about how the only thing the creator asked of us, he said, human beings were made from the living earth, the clay of the earth. And what they what he was talking about, he said, This earth is your mother. I always love her and care for her, and she will take care of you, just as your own mother gave birth to you. It replays itself in human terms that you are rooted to the earth and to your mother through your belly button. And, and now when you break, make that break, now you become part of the bigger world and you, you walk on your own two feet. And then you become a mother yourself and you re-propagate your seeds. You know, and, and in that story, that's, that's, it's like every day that we live comes true is told through the stories that we have uh, told over generations and there there are times with the coming of colonialization that our people went through many changes you know when they came across the ocean the first thing they did was try to change our thinking try to change our being and make us them mm, yes. you know this uh this uh weapon, multi-generational weapon called the doctrine of discovery mm. came into this world and colonial world and every country that the colonies went, what they did is take the country, take the land in for their church or for their king. And if people lived on the land that didn't follow their, their sacred cross, then they weren't human beings. So you weren't stealing land. You were only absorbing land. And those people that lived there didn't follow your way. So they weren't human. And so there was no sin. And you could look all through South America and what happened with the what happened to them to the South American people, how brutal it was, and how it happened here. North America, you know, uh, governments think that they were so clean. But but they, they weren't. You look at the, the uh, cowboys and Indian movies and what was done to Native people there and in the north here. And still, you talk of residential schools and all the things that they're now finding out about what happened. So not everybody was, uh, what do you call it, uh, you know, clean of, of germs. Yeah. You know, and, and everybody had a part to play in this. And so that did come into our world, but that's all the stories that we have to understand because in those stories, now we know our history is linked in there. Our culture is linked in there. And, and, and now we have to understand how precious it is what the creator gave to us. For all the different nations of the world, if we really understand who we are supposed to be, you know, our, our old, our, one of our old chiefs, he said, you know, you know, in Quebec, for example, I, rem I remember when the, when the government, one government came into power and, and said, well, we're now, from now on, you're only going to speak this language and you have no choice. We're going to make you us. And, and everybody has to speak this language. And one of our chiefs, he said, did you ever see in the world? where a robin was, was uh, forced to be a blue jay, where a squirrel was trying to be a rabbit, where a dog was trying to be a cat. Where did you ever see that? That every being and every animal and every life in this world, the creator gave us a special way, special way of being, special relationship within this earth. And every one of them is precious. Even for human beings, you look around the world, there are all, we all have different faces. We all have different skin. We all have different places where our, I say our culture, our, our whole lineage is rooted to the earth. And, you know, 
where is it in all those teachings? The creator, when he made all human beings, said, you're all equal. Everything is the same height. There's not one person that's more better than another or higher than another or more precious than another. We're supposed to be equal in the world. And, and But with that being said, the creator also said, you're only human beings, part of life. A human being is no more important than a worm or a bug. We're all part of the cycle of life. And that's where we went wrong, human beings, somewhere in the whole world where we thought, now we will have dominion over the earth. We will own everything on the earth. And if it gets in our way, we kill it or we destroy it or we eliminate it and make and plant there us. And that's where, you know, in this, what we call, if you're going to talk about Earth Day, that has been the disease, this thinking that has poisoned the whole world. And so you look at the world and is the world any better for it? Well, you know, I, I've, I've already um, met you a couple of times and every time you speak, um, there's amazing imagery that appears. And I'm an art teacher. So um, for our co-lesson, um, I think that imagery can be really well translated into drawings. So we're going to um, <laughs> get children or whoever <laughs> wants to join us because adolescents as well can join us to listen to some of the stories about Mother Earth and then to interpret them through drawing. Uh, images are really, really important, I think, in your storytelling. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah, it is. <coughs> Excuse me. But I, you know, uh, I, I will share with you what my wife, she was a teacher. She was a, a kindergarten teacher for 20 some odd years. And when kids would come into her class, in September, they spoke no language, Mohawk language. And she, in, in, from, in that 10 months that she had them, by, in, they came in in September. By December, they were already speaking. And by, by June, when the season was over, they didn't talk any English in her class. And she began to nurture this language and she has this, she has this special gift and she had them, she, those kids left speakers. And one of the things that she used and we use always, it's called the Ahontagari Wadekwa, the original instructions, the words which come before all things. And in that is this pattern and this relationship of giving thanks and in that relationship, if you picture a ladder, it starts with us, the people. And it starts with the earth and with this, all the things that grow on the earth and the, the medicines and the root life and the berry life and the food life to the waters, to the animals that live in the water and the bugs, all the way to the trees and to the animals that run in the forest. And then when we're done with all things of earth, we give, and the words say we give thanks to them for what they do for us. And because they continue to work in the way the creator instructed it, the cycle of this greater being called the cycle of life continues. And because it continues, we live. If the cycle of life began to shut down, there would be no life. If the foods would fail and seeds would no longer grow, there would be no food. And you, you picture that image. What kind of a life would it, world would it be when we look right up, we take a, a scan around our villages and our homes and our children are, are rolling over in pain because their bellies are empty and there's no more food to feed them. What kind of a world would we live in then? You know, and then we go from the earth to the sky. And in that picture, if you picture it, you know, you look at the winds from all four directions, the, the wind that comes from the north and the snow, the south wind brings the warmth, the west and the east bring the rains, all 
They all know what they have to do to sustain life, this world. You know, and they all are special. And then you see in our, in our stories, we talk about our grandfather, the thunder beams. In many cultures, everybody, as soon as they hear thunder and lightning, they run and they jump under the bed and they're afraid. In my, in my family, since my boys and my children, my grandchildren were born, we're not afraid of our grandfathers. We call them our grandfathers, our, our relations. And we always, when we hear thunder coming, my granddaughter runs from upstairs here and she says, Dada, grandfather, she says, remember, we have to go outside and we take a pipe and we burn tobacco and we say, grandfathers, we thank you. We're so happy to hear you again. We thank you for coming to visit us and we thank you for taking care of us. And we say, watch over the winds so that they won't destroy where we live. And that sure enough, they do that. <clears throat> but in the bigger picture, right, the thunder, they said a long time ago, there were big, ferocious animals in this world that lit and the creator could see they couldn't live with human beings. So he found a way to, to, to get rid of them in, the, in our world and send them below the earth. And it says still to this day, their remains and their spirit lives under the earth. And it says if they ever should rise, they, their breath would burn our skin in this whole world. And sure enough, what, and it says the, cre the thunder beings, they roam. And when they see these spirits try to rise, then they send their lightning and their thunder and they drive them back below, never to harm the people. But what are they say or what our grandfathers have done for millions of years human beings have undone in a hundred. <clears throat> now we drill holes in the earth yeah. and we shock the earth and we suck out the blood of the earth and it's called uh, oil, fossil fuels and, and the yeah. gas. And that we put that in our cars and burn it. And what has it done? It has burned us, the earth around us, right? The environment, the uh, all of the the atmosphere is burning around us because of all of the carbon and the methane and all the things that are coming and all the things that come out of the earth. And sure, and even then, what has, you know, what has uh, all of that done? In the summer, you look across the river to Montreal and you see the smog. Mm. And how many people are suffering from asthma and all the problems of the breath? Even the plants are suffering from acid rain and all of these things. Yeah. This is what they, our, our prophecies talked about, and we live in it now. Yeah. So when we talk to the thunders, we ask them to find a way to help us keep those things from rising. See, and it's all so about it's really a spiritual story, a, a living relationship of our instructions. And it goes all the way to you know, to the sun and the moon and how the sun is related to men and how the womb, the, the moon, our grandmother is related to women and the monthly cycle of a woman, this precious gift that only women have. And because they have this nurturing gift, they're the ones that can bring life into this world and nurture it, just like our mother, the earth gave us her life and her, her clay. You know, and it goes all the way to the stars and all the way to the end, to the to the sky world. And so if you look at this picture, you say it can be done in art. This is the picture when my wife was teaching them. You know what she would do every day? They would do that when they would be in their class. And they would explain it in the way that they could out of their mind, in their language. And she would ask them, she would she were or she would help them and say, okay, we're going to draw, draw, draw what you know of the thunder beings. So every boy and every girl, they would make a draw a picture of the thunder, the way they see her, the way they see them. And then she would put that into a book. Tell me about what do you, what do you know about strawberries and the berry life? So they would draw pictures of the berries and the different things and 
tell me about medicines. What do you know about medicines? They would draw pictures of what they think is medicine. So that boy and that girl, when they see that picture, it becomes real to them because they drew it. They envisioned it. You know, what is thunder? What does the stars mean to you? And so they would draw pictures of what the stars or the moon or the sun means to them. And those, all of those images become real. So now when they become adults, now when they're going to talk to their children, now they're talking about something that's real, not just something that came out of a book. It's inside of them. Well, that's what we're going to attempt to do on the 22nd and uh, get uh, students to draw what they believe is real through the imagery that you're going to uh, provoke inside of them. Because I know as an art teacher, you provoke a lot of imagery for me. So I'm really looking forward to uh, April the 22nd on Earth Day to hear your story. <sighs> and I'm sure the students will be looking forward to, forward to it too. And I want to invite all teachers on April the 22nd at 10 o'clock to come and join um, Charlie Patton and his wonderful visual stories about Mother Earth. Um, and I also want to thank the, uh, the QPAT anti-racism discussion group who brought this together, this wonderful idea of a co-lesson so that we can learn a little bit more about your culture. So I'm really looking forward to that. I thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me.